But let's dig a, a little bit further into the issues here in the United States. Joining us now is a doctor who's been seeing this all play out on the front lines, Dr. Jeremy Faust, uh, an ER physician at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, as well as a Harvard Medical School instructor, uh, joins us once again. And Dr. Faust, it's good to see you uh, once again to kick off the week. And when we talk about this, as Kristen's highlighting, obviously the cases rising in some of these states is very worrying. But luckily, when you look into the fatality rate in, in Florida, California, uh, Arizona, and Texas, only about half and perhaps even less than half of what we've seen before in New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey here, 2.5% in Florida, 2.8% in California versus uh, New York, New Jersey, closer to 7%. So what do you think is really causing a lower mortality rate? And is that maybe one piece here that people could say, all right, maybe cases are rising, but overall we're getting a better handle on treating patients? One of the really difficult things about tracking mortality is that you have to know that you're testing enough. There's no possible way that the mortality rate is 7% in, in New Jersey. It's just that we haven't tested enough people. So you can kind of compare these states, but each of them is, is inadequate in their testing at a different level. No one's inadequate yet. We know that because the CDC thinks that ultimately the, the true fatality of this thing is under 1%, but very few states show that. The thing about the cases and the hospitalizations and the deaths, those three metrics don't really always track in parallel. And sometimes they catch up. You'll get a spike in cases and then you'll get a spike in deaths. Other times they won't. And the reason for that is really who gets infected. Now we know the very young and the very old are a little bit different. The very old are more likely to get infected and the very young are a little less likely. But really the broad adult category, the workforce, so to speak, the, the, the likelihood of an infection doesn't seem to be changed. The rate per capita of infection is about the same across. But that's not true of hospitalizations and of deaths. So that's where things get a little different. Yeah, as you note, it's, it's very hard to kind of create these apples to apples comparisons, especially across state lines. You got different uh, policies in place here, especially masks, when we think about how New York has been able to get this uh, under control. But even as we're seeing some of those states that have get have been able to get all of this under control in New York, uh, we are seeing the mayor now saying that he might consider a plan to roll back, uh, bringing back indoor dining, which was expected July 6th, as we are seeing a spike in other cases. You're in Massachusetts. Massachusetts is another state that has seen things move in the right direction. But how worrying is it for you when we talk about the, the capacity for some of these states that have problems right now to reinfect some of the states that had already seen their cases come down? Controlling this virus is no, it's not easy. That's why we have a pandemic. This is not, the usual playbook just doesn't apply. We have to change our, our strategy in real time to adjust. That's the way to go. Not to say, oh, here's our plan, we're sticking to it. We really have to acknowledge that this is not a pleasant virus in any way in terms of what it can do to some people, but also just in terms of trying to understand how it works. We are still working all that out. So it makes perfect sense to me, for example, that the, the EU wouldn't want our dollars right now because they know that if you can't control the virus, you can't control the economy. So that makes complete sense. I think that states like New York and New Jersey that have been through this before and they've had such a terrible spring are more likely to be places where you have masks being worn. It's not just the masks. I believe the masks are a very important thing. There's this big debate. Is it the, the most important thing or what? To me, the, the thing that matters is that masks say that we're taking it seriously and that we're not opening bars and restaurants and taking it back and saying, hey, we, we weren't ready. That's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for people to respond to the facts on the ground, not to say, oh, ha ha, you were wrong. It's to say, great. You know what? I'd rather a better policy today than continuing a policy that didn't work yesterday. Yeah, for sure. And when we think about treatment options there, too, we've seen that change as we've gotten uh, more learned about coronavirus. One of those drugs that has proven uh, beneficial in treating patients is remdesivir, the company behind that, Gilead Science, uh, Science is setting the price for that drug now. Uh, in the U.S., it would be $520 a vial, which would make it uh, more than three grand for a five-day course there. Uh, you're a doctor who's treated patients here. Uh, when we're talking about that price, Critics have pointed out uh, that might be higher than necessary here if you can especially have generics maybe introduce their own. Or also on the flip side, you've got uh, Gilead coming back and saying, look, this drug helps get people out of the hospital sooner. So it will, in the end, help hospitals save money here. So how, how would you react to that price point of more than three grand for a five-day course and how it may actually uh, become problematic moving forward in treatment options if people don't have insurance? 
Well, the grand picture in, in terms of how the markets react to things like remdesivir, to me, maybe makes more sense to think about in terms of, well, look, we have a drug that appears to have some benefit of getting patients home sooner. What the bigger picture is, we found something. We know what we know something of what to do. Maybe we'll learn another drug. Maybe this is the, this is the first one, but maybe that means that number two, three, four, or five are coming down the pipeline, just like the steroid that's that's been really successful in the UK that we could use as well. So it's more of like, oh, actually, good news. We actually have a chance to fight this thing before a vaccine comes. In terms of the price point, again, it's very difficult because on one hand you could say, okay, this drug has been shown to decrease hospital lengths of stay in patients who are sick enough to need oxygen in that subgroup. So you could say it saves money, it, it saves misery, it's a, it's a good thing. Um, you could also argue though, it's a five-day course. Some patients who get admitted for a day or two, I can imagine them staying for the full five days to get the drug because it's IV only. So it actually could save money or not save money depending on how it plays out and who receives the drug. And there's also this whole question as to whether the, the company is gonna charge different uh, prices for different buyers. That's It gets to be very complicated. So I, I, I worry that this will be a very expensive endeavor and that, um, but look, if it, if it does save uh, hospital days, it, 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 then it will save money. If it doesn't, it will cost money. Yeah, and all these issues that we've talked about in drug pricing here in the US uh, shining brighter uh, the light on those issues here when we think about a global pandemic and trying to save this and get this under control uh, as well. But Dr. Jeremy Faust, appreciate you taking the time to chat with us again. Uh, thanks again. Always, we enjoy you sharing your thoughts, especially today. I understand your parents have an anniversary to celebrate, so I appreciate you taking the time uh, as well. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.